In addition to this complimentary MRI safety overview tape, GE Medical Systems is proud to offer two new MRI safety compliance education videotapes and DVDs. Featuring Dr. Canal, MD, FACR, a recognized leader in the field of MRI and MRI safety, they are for medical and non-medical personnel. If you are interested in these more comprehensive MRI safety compliance offerings, please go to www.drcanal.com and select the MR Safety Series link. Another safety video. No big name stars, no millionaires, no far flung romantic locations. But if you want reality TV, take a look at this. That was a brief illustration of the raw power of an MRI magnet. And that's as real as it gets. Today's topic, magnet and cryogen safety. A lot of it comes down to good old common sense. But it helps to know a bit about how this complex and sophisticated imaging system works. Let's start with the basics. At the heart of MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, is an extremely powerful magnet. A magnetic field is generated by sending a strong electric current through coiled wire. The magnetic force is strongest at the magnet's poles. When the electric current is increased, the magnetic force also increases. The MRI system requires an enormous amount of electric current, many times the amount of electricity coming into an average house. This much current through conventional wire could generate a lot of heat due to its internal resistance. But the MR magnet uses a special type of wire. To keep the electrical conductor, the coiled wire, so to speak, in the MR superconducting magnet from overheating and to remove electrical resistance, it is supercooled using liquid helium, which is a cryogen. Cryogens are cooling agents. Liquid helium, with a temperature of minus 452 degrees Fahrenheit, and liquid nitrogen at minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Liquid helium is applied to a magnet's conductor to keep it at superconducting temperature. In some magnets, liquid nitrogen is used to regulate the amount of helium that boils off due to the intense heat generated in the conductor. Once current is flowing through the supercooled conductor, there's no electrical resistance, so no additional power is needed to keep the current flowing. Therefore, the system rarely needs to be shut down, and the magnetic field is always present, even when the system is not being used. The magnetic field surrounding the magnet is called the fringe field. It extends outward from the ISO center of the magnet in all directions. It is somewhat like the magnetic field produced by an ordinary bar magnet you can hold in your hand, but many thousands of times stronger. In fact, the strength of an MRI magnetic field is several thousand times greater than the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. This powerful magnetic field is needed for the MR system to align the protons of hydrogen atoms in the body so imaging can take place. So with all this going on, just how strong is an MRI system's magnetic field? The magnetic force exerted on an object is a function of its mass or weight, its distance from the magnet, the field strength of the magnet, and its orientation to the magnetic field. In tests at GE Medical Systems, a two pound wrench two and a half feet away from a 1.5 Tesla MR magnet was pulled toward the magnet with a force of 3.7 pounds. At two feet away, the magnetic force rose to 10.8 pounds. 
and at the magnet, the wrench was pulled with a force of more than 50 pounds. A rubber ball filled with steel shot illustrates the speed an object can attain as it heads into the magnet, but just as important is the rate of the ball's acceleration and the unpredictable direction it takes. When you look at all the factors, a large amount of electric current generating a magnetic field this strong, this broad, and this persistent, and with liquid helium and liquid nitrogen as integral parts of the system, there are obvious potential hazards to people and equipment in the area. Therefore, specific precautions must be taken above, below, and all around the magnet. First among these is the placement of warning signs. Signs must be placed in high visibility locations so they can easily be seen by anyone in the area, even casual passers-by. Signs are also available in several languages should a need arise for a multilingual solution. A site may also wish to implement an employee training program to prepare them for the change in environment. Be sure to notify all personnel in the area two days prior to the activation of the magnet. In addition to signage and notification, there's another extremely important precaution that must be taken at all magnet sites. No ferromagnetic objects, including tools, tape measures, vacuum pumps, gas cylinders, and so on, may be brought into an exam room where a magnet is fully powered and operational and a magnetic field is present. When a magnet is in this condition, it is called ramped or at field. All magnets should be considered ramped or at field unless you are informed otherwise. If there is any doubt about the magnetism of any object, the object must be checked with a hand magnet before being allowed into the magnet room. Objects that may not be brought into a magnet room include self-winding or analog watches, metal jewelry, hairpins, keys, metal eyeglasses, credit ID or security cards with a magnetic strip, hearing aids, cameras, tape recorders, any type of magnetic recording heads, magnetic tapes, cell phones, pagers, miscellaneous pocket items, and equipment such as mops, buckets, and so on. In short, anything that may contain ferromagnetic material. Another consideration for a magnetic resonance imaging site is that the room containing the magnet may be accessed by people such as police, firefighters, and emergency medical technicians, as well as in-house workers from housekeeping or maintenance. Any patient entering the MRI exam room must also be checked for ferromagnetic objects. Each MRI site must establish procedures for doing so. Most find it convenient to use a patient interview form or check sheet. For everyone's safety, it's a good idea to ask the radiology supervisor at your site to acquire and use such a form. What if an accident does happen? What are the procedures for dealing with a magnet-related injury? First, if the injured person is conscious, help get the person outside the magnetic field and notify a doctor. If the injured person is unconscious, or if you're not sure of the air quality in the scan room, notify the site's emergency response team. Never enter a scan room where air quality is questionable. If smoke comes from the magnet or if the oxygen alarm sounds, evacuate the area. And if a metal object remains in the field or is attached to the magnet, qualified service personnel must remove it. To do this, the magnet may have to be ramped down, that is, have its magnetic field removed. Each magnet site should develop its own guidelines for emergency situations and establish an emergency response team that is trained in magnetic field and cryogen environment safety. If a person becomes trapped against the magnet, the emergency response team must be summoned immediately. In addition, the system operator, a physician, or qualified service personnel must be notified. 
If the magnet must be shut down, one of these key people must be involved in the decision and the process. Different types of magnets have different properties and field strengths. Each magnet type has its own potential risks and precautions to minimize those risks. Earlier, I mentioned the use of cryogen liquids to supercool superconducting magnets. The extremely low temperatures of these cooling agents means they require special handling and safety precautions. These are extremely critical for ensuring the safety of all people who enter the magnet room. Some of the potential hazards are cryogenic cold burns and asphyxiation, and aberrant cryogenic or magnetic field effects such as explosions, fire, or ferromagnetic projectiles. Cryogenic gases, if released, will quickly displace breathable air. Helium rises and nitrogen falls when it's cold, then rises and mixes with the air as it warms up. This reduces the amount of oxygen in the air to dangerously low levels. Most sites have oxygen monitors installed, and anyone servicing a magnet must use some form of oxygen monitoring. If you have any doubt about the air quality, don't enter the room. Liquid cryogens can liquefy oxygen in the atmosphere, producing a highly enriched oxygen liquid, which is also highly flammable so smoking is prohibited in the magnet room and around any cryogens. A very serious situation can occur when some sort of problem causes the magnet's superconductive wires, which had been conducting current with no resistance, to become resistive and to heat up. When this happens, the main magnetic field quickly collapses and all the magnet's liquid helium boils off at a very rapid rate. This is called a quench. If the magnet's vent system fails during a quench, cryogens are released into the air, displacing the oxygen in the room and making it difficult or impossible to breathe. This is a potentially life-threatening situation. The sudden failure of the vent system may also cause the magnet room to pressurize preventing you from exiting the room. To avoid this situation, before entering the magnet room for any reason, make sure that all doors leading into the room are blocked open. In case of a magnet vent failure during a quench, get down on the floor. That's where the oxygen will be. Stay near the floor and get out of the magnet room as quickly as possible. If there is an emergency incident involving cryogens, what should you do? First, be prepared. Think before you react. Know how to contact the local emergency response team and notify them immediately. If a person is in the vicinity of a release of cryogenic gases, do not make any rescue attempts until the emergency response team is present and you can verify that the environment is safe for normal occupancy. If a ferromagnetic object becomes attached to the magnet and can't be safely removed by two people using their bare hands, GE highly recommends that the magnet be ramped down. Any hospital or on-site personnel who are involved with MR equipment should be familiar with the operator's manual for that equipment, including emergency ramp-down procedures and operation of the magnet rundown unit. However, the magnet rundown button initiates a quench that can be hazardous to personnel and equipment. This button should be used for life-threatening situations only and not for objects in the bore. The site's field service engineer should be consulted before initiating any action. The magnet environment under certain circumstances can be a dangerous place. Your first priority has to be safety. Don't take any aspect of magnet safety for granted. Complacency can be fatal. Know the potential hazards and take them seriously. Remember, your safety and the safety of anyone entering a magnet room has to come first. The magnetic field produced by an MR system can't be seen or heard, yet it remains an extremely powerful force. That's 
reality.